On June 17 and 18, migrant rights groups and progressive organizations held mobilizations in the cities of Naples and Caserta in Italy. They demanded peace, social justice, and the regularization of undocumented people. Migrants play a key role in the Italian economy, especially in agriculture. However, they continue to face difficult living conditions and poverty and precariousness, in addition to institutional racism. What is the role played by migrants in the Italian economy and what kind of conditions do they endure? Maurizio Coppola of Potere al Popolo, one of the organizations supporting the mobilization, talks about these issues. Uh, labor market is uh, dominated by uh, migrant uh, labor. Uh, uh, around 10% of, uh, of the total workforce is uh, foreign workers, are foreign workers. So like 2.3 million people are foreigners working in the Italian economy. And um, the, the important thing is like to see that there is not only the agricultural industry that is dominated by migrant uh, labor, but also other um, uh, sectors. And uh, first of all, for example, logistics, the logistics in the northern part of Italy, it's very important. Um, it's a very important sector that in the last 20 years increased a lot and uh, in which uh, precarious working conditions are dominant. And there you find a lot of people from Bangladesh, Pakistan, but also from Morocco and Egypt working in these sectors. Uh, it's like in uh, in Emilia Romagna, it's a, a region where, and Lombardia, two regions where the logistics is concentrated. And we had a very important uh, wave of struggle in 2010, 11, 12, above all by the irregular workers without um, uh, residence permit, uh, which uh, struggled for better salaries, for uh, better working conditions, and linked to this uh, uh, improvement of the working conditions, of course, also to receive papers to be uh, regularized uh, because the two uh, things uh, are, are come together. If you are an irregular worker, the, the, pro, the possibility to put pressure on you and to pay uh, lower salaries, it's, you, it's uh, higher. So there was like a very important wave uh, of struggle during the, uh, like 10 years ago. But during the pandemic also, during the pandemic, we had like migrant workers of the logistics saying, we are living in like collective shelters where nothing is done, no measures uh, to protect the people from COVID, and in the uh, same time, if we are, if we get COVID, we cannot go to work because it is forbidden to work. So this is a contradiction we cannot accept that like the costs of uh, of COVID is put on the shoulder of the migrant workers, and so there was also like uh, struggles for better protections in the collective shelters by these workers. Uh, in the logistics, but of course, we have, as you said, the agricultural industry. It's above all in southern Italy, where people from the African continent are working. And there, the huge question is above all the working hours, the salaries also, because we have there like a system that uh, puts pressure on migrant workers on the, of, the, of the African continent. And they, uh, they receive like two, two euros, three euros maximum per hour. And then also the question of, of the housing, because there are like ghettos around these huge fields in the southern part of Italy. Uh, in which the, the migrant workers are living in, uh, in very precarious conditions without water, without electricity. And there are also a lot of people also dying there in these ghettos because fires are breaking out and so on. And so also there in the last 10 years, we had huge and important mobilizations by the migrant workers. And the third sector I wanted to mention is the care sector. Uh, above all, women from Eastern Europe are working there. And they, during the pandemic, they uh, really uh, felt the pressure and this precarious uh, condition without security and without protection because they were fired uh, because the elder people, they feared to be uh, to catch COVID. And so like this, uh, this uh, uh, migrant women workers in the in the care sector are living inside of the houses of these people. Uh, they said, we do not want to, to have foreigners in our house, so uh, we fire you. And this is something that, uh, yeah, of course, when you, when you speak about the economy uh, in 2021-22, as I said, like 10% of the total workforce in Italy uh, is uh, connected to the migrant workers. But in 2021-22, uh, 35% of the people losing their job uh, because of the pandemic uh, they uh, were migrant workers. So like the impact of the crisis it, uh, is much uh, bigger and stronger on migrant workers. In 2020, the Italian government introduced a regularization program, which was supposed to address many of these issues faced by migrants. Has this policy worked? 
Yeah, it was incredible because the day it was announced, the agriculture minister uh, came to the TV uh, and uh, started to cry and to say how how, uh, how problematic the situation of migrant workers uh, is uh, in, in Italy. And so the government presented like a regularization program that then at the end only focused, and this is, this is one of the, the main problem, only focused uh, migrant workers in two sectors. Uh, that means in the agricultural sector and in the care sector. The two sectors most uh, um, impacted by the, by the crisis in the sense that the, the workers there had most prob problems and difficulties to have a safe situation, to have measures uh, uh, to protect themselves from COVID. So this is uh, this is one of the of the huge problems of the of the of the regularization program. Then we have a second huge problem that is that the migrant worker had to pay 500 euro to start to start the procedure of regularization. So uh, of course. Uh, it is a way also to 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 put uh, like a handicap to to the migrant workers to to have a real regularization. And then the third discriminatory moment of this regularization program is that the employer of the migrant worker had to denounce uh, its, uh, himself as an employer of irregular work, but of course uh, prevented a lot of them to regularize their workers. So they said, no, why should I do it if uh, till now I could. Uh, hire them without problem if they are, are irregular without a residence permit and so on and so on. So it is a very discriminatory regularization program and uh, this uh, regularization, this discriminatory moment, uh, we see it also in the numbers. The Ministry of Interior uh, received around 250 applications for regularization in the, in the first months. Two years later, today, it's two years later, um, we have uh, more than 50% of these uh, applications uh, that have not been elaborated because of different forms of institutional racism and uh, malfunctioning. Uh, so there is like an impossible, uh, they, they demand impos impossible things to the migrant irregular workers, uh, papers they can never uh, receive because there is no embassy or no consulate in, the, in Italy of their you know, origin countries. Uh, the offices are just closed, so you cannot go there as a migrant and make your proceed, formalize your procedure of regularization. So a huge amount of problems, uh, ra racist uh, problems, but also like malfunctioning of, of the institutions uh, show today that this regularization program is not working and the people are still waiting for their responses and they are still working also in very precarious conditions today. The organizers of the mobilization have presented certain concrete demands to the Italian government. What are these proposals? I think uh, we can summarize the demands on two levels. The first level is a very concrete level of uh, like working in life conditions of, of the migrant workers. The, um, the, the, the message is very clear. It is impossible to respond to the huge amount of contradictions migrant workers are living. Uh, with emergency measures. So we cannot just say in August 22, we need an emergency measure to regularize migrant workers. We need a structural, structural intervention or by the government. And it is exactly what the organizations are demanding. Uh, collective regularization of migrant workers with no resident permit, uh, with no documents. It is the only way to be sure that these people can continue working, that these people who also paid for a long time because black uh, regular work is also like a gray zone. They continue paying like social insurance, but they are not regular in the territory. So they do not have the right also to have access to the social uh, insurance they pay for. So this is also a way to protect them, to get, give them security, uh, to, to, to allow them also in the longer term to stabilize their lives in, uh, in Italy. But of course, there is also a second element of the, of the demonstration, a very political one, a very uh, strong political one, because the, there is the World Refugees Day in uh, June 20. And uh, of course, this uh, World Refugee Day has a special significant significance this year. Uh, the escalation of the war in Ukraine has introduced the possibility of a new world war, and the militarization of the conflict is uh, producing even more, even more deaths and refugees. Since the beginning of the war, uh, officially there are like 6.6 .6 million 
uh, uh, refugees from Ukraine and uh, the countries around. And um, but since the beginning of the conflict, also like the Western countries are militarizing, weaponizing the conflict and uh, and uh, and treating also refugees differently. Uh, among their origin, um, their country of origin. So like people still fleeing from Afghanistan, from Ethiopia, from Syria are like they are receiving closed doors and uh, the refugees of uh, Ukraine, they uh, have like the uh, open doors as it should be. We are not saying that the, the refugees from Ukraine should not come to Europe, uh, to, to the Western countries of Europe, Italy and so on, but we have to treat all refugees in the same way. So there is really a very strong also character of peace, of social justice and against inequalities in these demonstrations today and tomorrow. And today, um, as we said in Naples, uh, 5,000 people, 5,000 migrants took to the streets and this is a huge number for Naples. This is a huge number of people really saying, no, you have to react. You cannot accept anymore uh, what is going on. Tomorrow, the demonstration will be in Caserta. Caserta is in the north of uh, Campania, the region uh, of Naples. And uh, a lot of migrant workers are, are working there in the fields, in the agricultural sector. So it is very important also to support the demonstration tomorrow. And uh, the first step was a success. Now there are like meetings also with the Ministry of the Interior, with the regional uh, ministries to improve the situation of migrant workers in Italy. Yeah, Vamos